There are but two powers in the world, the sword and the mind. And in the long run, the sword is always beaten by the mind. So welcome guys, welcome to this new video. So this video I have been working on for a very, very long time. This video unpacks everything that we do with inside of self-build systems it is our updated thesis 2023 protocol because i always get this question it does not matter where i go at a conference or online is that jay what do you guys actually do like how can you help me with my processes what is the thing that you guys actually do and this document is going to explain just that now i will say this it is very extensive so Sit with me and you will be able to discover and explore everything that we do based on the hypergrowth protocol, which we have developed with inside of self-built systems. Now, this is our API master thesis on how to scale from 40K to 500 to $10 million profitable and add a few mils to your network in the next 12 months. Now, fair warning, this document is very, very extensive and it might cause a brain gas. So recently uh, we have helped another brand scale from six to seven figures US and in a very, very short amount of time. Now this did not happen by accident, but by the result of careful planning and close collaboration between all parties, as I will outline a fair few case studies, client testimonials, and also uh, partners which we have worked with and are working with right now. Now, a lot of our results are not normal. Our clients' results are not normal. We have alignment in the process. We only seek to work with companies that are either doing six, seven to eight figures, and we help them optimize throughout that whole process to in order to tap into multiple eight figures. Why do I say this? Because I have had the experience in the past where we have worked with companies that were misaligned, that did not want to actually dent the universe, that did not actually want to change the lives of millions of people. And therefore, we have a very, very closely crafted selection process where we specifically only work with companies that are doing between six and eight figures and that their goals align with our goals, okay? So again, go check this out. Like I've said, our results are not normal because what we do is not normal. You will not have seen any of this on the internet, okay? So moving forward, whether we're talking in terms of organic results, which you will see here, we helped Timon Creek go from zero to 2.6 million in audience size in less than 11 months. That was what that growth process and cycle looked like. And we also helped them go from producing six to a seven figure run rate. Obviously Timon now has various different arms of his business, which everything is under the Timon Creek brand, but there are different variations and factors and things which we have worked at, which we're going to get in very, very deep here. Now this, what you will see over here is a ghost account. Now just another proof of concept here is that many times when we work with brands, the question I hear a lot is that, well, this ghost account is, does it act like a, like a debt, like a backup account? And Initially, when we started this idea of the ghost account, it was not for a backup account at all. It was simply to increase throughput. Because if you can have more than one account that is rapidly growing with real followers, with real actual physical application and organic strategy to increase credibility, to increase status delta with inside of the market, you will have the highest leverage, which is influence any sort of business. If you have connected and tapped into influence, you are walking around with the ninth wonder of the world, which we refer to as influence, right? So again, go check out the proof of concept and the case studies here linked in this document down below. So the hyper growth process from these brands mentioned is exactly what we use with the brands that we work with. Now we work exclusively with six to eight figure brands, as I have stated and help them to scale to multiple eight figures profitably or multiple eight figure brands looking to optimize and maximize their performance. 
So to work consistently at such a level requires a dynamic approach and also a dynamic protocol, which this clearly is, which is consistently updated as we grow, as we learn, as technology evolves with all the AI, etc. We have obviously been able to be on the front end of the technology and the front end of the innovation. And I cannot wait to share these uh, AI tools and things with you guys and how we actually use and implement them. Okay. So, um, you can basically, you know, use all of this stuff that we give out for free and you can try to implement this yourself, or you can simply go ahead and work with us. So let's quickly have a look at the overall perspective, the bird's eye view of this uh, beautiful uh, machine, which we have built. Okay. Now, firstly, I am very passionate about this one sided. Secondly, is that this over here, we have part one. Okay. Part two, phase one, two, three, and four. You can obviously go directly to where you want to go. Um, if you do, if you are very, uh, obviously highly skilled and experienced business owner, then go, go where you need to go. Obviously don't need to watch the full video. So, Without further ado, these are some of the brands uh, that trust us throughout the process and the companies we have worked with and some of the companies we are still working with, just to outline a few, okay? You can go check them out, really established brands in uh, the internet, in the world, essentially. So self-built systems, case studies, and client portfolio partners. Now, Tamon Creek, School for CEOs, and the TK brand, as I have mentioned. So he was doing around low six figures and we helped him scale to seven figures and obviously packed on which right now since recording this video he has over 3.5 or 3.6 millions in audience size and we have obviously stamped the credibility and influence with inside of everything which we have done and we will do a bit of a deeper dive at a later stage on how we did that so let's quickly have an overview of what we did so we redesigned the product pages, the landing pages, collection pages, home pages, and basically whole full funnel website design. We branded the whole business as you will see, and we brand aligned it for the current goals and the five, 10, 20 year goals moving therefore. Okay. So we updated and we installed new systems, architecture and processes for everything that's obviously optimized on online and really making the machine as efficient as possible. So we built and we installed the AI architecture and infrastructure that is required to run the current um, advanced tech that is available on the market. Obviously, uh, industry specific and application specific, therefore. Okay. So we hired and trained sales operators and you go, you can go and see the proof thereof and the time frame therefore is still ongoing. Now the next client here, we have Dean White from King Contractors Agency and Digital Mastery Limited. Now, Dean is a very, very cool guy. And now we started to work with Dean a fair few uh, months ago. And what happened throughout this whole process is, is Dean came to us and he was doing around $15,000 in MRR and we helped him ramp up to crossing now the $60,000 in MRR mark. I just had a message from him yesterday and haven't had time to obviously go through this whole process, but the time frame is therefore still ongoing. Now let's quickly have an overview on what we did for Dean. Now, Dean is a marketing agency owner specifically. He has different legs and different entrepreneurship ventures that he is involved with, but the business, the two businesses where we were mainly involved with was King Contractors Agency and Digital Mastery Limited. Both has a digital marketing arm of the businesses. One is more catered towards the roofers and the other one is more catered towards the general population. So on the roofer side of things, what we did was is that we updated the systems flow and the structures and re redesigned the offer and the opportunity vehicle. I must say this, Dean is now on track. He was doing 18% month over month growth. And within the next two to three months, we will see Dean crossing 100K in MR. I cannot wait to share that with you guys. Okay, so you can also go and check all of this stuff out on our website. If you wanna go see that, selfholdsystems.com. It will be there for you, for your eyes to display and view and see. Uh, the before and after states, the client testimonials, etc., and the processes are overlaid there. So, we designed and optimized new funnels. So, Dean already had a bunch of stuff built, obviously, a bunch of systems running. And we came in, we looked at everything, we asked a few very, very important questions, and we got down to the actual solving variable, the actual thing that needed to be solved in order to keep the needle moving. Okay. So we installed the different pay channels and we optimized the current efforts, which was already, um, you know, 
driven. We really tapped into the meta and to the personal branding and we ran up organic traffic and the initial status delta within side of the market. We also tapped into influence a little bit more of the influence kind of like levers, okay? So we updated the current sales process and uh, organization reps and we trained million dollar operators closing deals le left and right. Now obviously that's a goal of a million dollar operator is a sales closer, right? So you can also go and see the proof of the concept thereof and uh, also go see the proof of his organic results which we are currently driving for him throughout this whole process. Now you must understand that when we look at business, a business in general, what we do is business agnostic. It's not cookie cutter and I will explain that whole thing later on but Dean's, example is a, Dean's business is a prime example of a business that can very, very, very well in the current market environment, okay? So five star insurance. And Dean also runs a very, very lean team. Next line, Five Star Insurance is a six-figure insurance company and they reached out to me and to the business online and they came to me with a question of saying, hey, uh, can you help us increase our sales? We are doing X amount of revenue and ARR and we want to take it to X. Obviously, they have goals. I'm not gonna talk about those goals right now. It's obviously, it's very important for the CEO, okay? Now, what we did was for them, we took them to the six-figure run rate, which we, they were doing. We helped them obviously cross the seven-figure run rate now in a very, very short amount of time. And we redesigned the product page, the landing page, the collection page, the home page. And we also had a full rebranding of the business with recording to our framework, which we're going through. And then we looked at the whole funnel and the website perspective, okay? So we completely built out their CRO and data-based testing processes. We updated their retention marketing and we updated and installed systems and architecture for their current, well, for the, for the current processes and we updated that to the newest and the best tech possible and obviously systems architecture with regards to that and then also the AI component with all of the different insurance packages and bundles and different things that they were optimizing to sell there for, okay? Insurance is a big industry. Now, we built and we installed AI architecture and infrastructure, as I've mentioned, and then we updated the current sales process to new world sales. And if I ever hear me say the word new world, it just simply means the best stuff that is currently on the market when it comes to the actual integration between the sales archetype and the technology. That is what I am referring to. Right, so then we updated the current sales process to the full, they, they had a, obviously a, a in-person call center and we had to train a seven-man sales team for that operation. Now this was obviously not inside sales but outside sales in the field kind of work, right? Um, and then we looked at um, a fair few other things with regards to obviously strategical application for different campaigns moving forward but that's an ongoing process. Now, next client here is Dr. Kat Kesty from St. Petersburg Skin and Laser. Now she's currently doing around let me rephrase that. Before she came to Southfield Systems, they were currently doing around 40 to 50K in MRR. And as I've said, we've moved so fast and we've worked with like a lot of various different clients in, like in based in said industries. And they have recently crossed the 110K MRR mark. And this has also been in a very, very short amount of time. And you can go and check. We will release all of the up-to-date case studies on our uh, website and everything is on there that you can go and check that out. Now, Dr. Cat had a really, really specific personal goal and an organizational goal. Okay, so Dr. Cat is what I refer to as the the SEAL teams of, uh, of surgeons. Obviously, she is a very, very highly studied um, surgeon. Now. With that comes a lot of competition, obviously, right? Now, what we did for her was we obviously understood the long-term goal and the things that they wanted to really achieve, but what we did was we, we built out cold friendly offers, landing pages from scratch, okay? And we optimized their current website, everything that they had on there. We actually had to scrape the whole site and to redo the whole thing. And then we moved over to optimize the CRO and the data-driven processes because uh, Dr. Kat and her team, they were already working with uh, an outsourced marketing agency and an outsourced ads agency, which was really the problem here because the, the communication and the optimization for the different things where the money was put to work, it, it wasn't making sense because the dollar that was being spent and the promises that were being made from these outsourced agencies or the promises that they were making, they weren't fulfilling on those promises. And they were like, 
just you know fulfilling based on retainer okay so that's really one of the problems that we solve here so we completely built out their whole CRO and database testing processes okay we updated their retention marketing we updated and installed new systems architecture and processes and then we built and installed AI architecture and infrastructure we updated the current sales process to the new world obviously sales uh, process um, which for Dr. Cat and them was a little bit different because at the first initial optimization that they had was first to um, to make sure that everything that they were doing with inside of their own sales process was optimized. Okay, so with regards to the teams and the everything that was running internally before we can actually move out externally and and look in terms of dominating uh, the, the outer realms, obviously the the bigger circle of the U.S. First, we needed to make sure that we really strapped inside of their state of operations, right? So, we, um, as I said, we updated the current sales process, opti optimized the deal flow, cut the sales cycle in half, we installed uh, new backend models to increase customer retention, and we re revamped the organic strategy to cover more ground and obviously differentiate and get her message to stand out above all of her competitors, right? Uh, doctors are very, very, um, let's just call it uh, competitive. So um, yeah, and we're currently working along uh, alongside some of their internal teams to make this happen. And it's obviously a currently ongoing process. You can go and see what it looks like, some of the things that we are doing. Um, you can go and check out there, uh, obviously the proof over here. So uh, Whamily.io. So Whamily is a very interesting uh, company, a very, very cool company. Now, what happened is that a fair few years ago, I mean a year or two years ago, that Whamily raised a bunch of money with a VC called Knife Capital. Now, throughout the whole process, they obviously had to deploy the capital into directions and areas to really make the machine more profitable. They had a really, really cool SaaS, and obviously I came across the whole thing, and we had chats and stuff, and then obviously led us to helping them. Now, they have recently won the award for the best tech company in South Africa, okay? so. Moving uh, forward, I, I don't want to talk too much about there because it's obviously still an ongoing process and we are under NDA with a bunch of things there. So creation capital, here we have an eight figure um, asset management for the private sector. Now obviously this is a complete different kind of like uh, company which we are involved with here just to show you our abilities and our, um, yeah, how we can are able to differentiate uh, industry specific and also business agnostic, right? It's, it's, it's not cookie cutter, as I've said it before. So currently busy with updating their funnels plus website structures and sales processes. However, that is one side of the story which we're doing, but there are many other internal things which we are helping them, obviously removing the chaff and really, really getting their market message resonance through and being able to um, dominate even harder at the level that which they are dominating right now. So then again, we, ha we have the next one here. Getting a little excited there was toastfx.com. Now, Toast is a trader, basically. A, he, he runs a trading firm in France, and he had an educational component which he came to us for. Now, the educational component was that the French side of the business was already doing fairly okay, you know, but he came to us with the idea of saying, hey, uh, can you not help us fix this English side of the business? We are having some money coming through. We have like really, really big targets and things that we want to reach and you know, want to impact a lot of people. And then I said, of course. So then we got involved there and we helped them collect 100K, obviously to their bottom line in the first three months of working with them. Now, we completely built out their CRO and testing processes, funnel engineering, AI components, and customer service elements with some RL and reinforcement learning processes in, embedded in there. And AI-driven outbound prospecting and cold email campaigns, right? So the proof thereof, you can go check out the, uh, the, the testimonial there and you can go and see what we did there. You can go check out the proof shots of the 100K that was collected um, and the whole growth process, which was obviously documented. Now, uh, next one here, we have Simone Estelle, which is one of our fitness kind of like consulting clients, which we have here. Um, she is a now turned celebrity fitness trainer and health coach. Okay, we helped her do that, get the badge of celebrity personal trainer. And she recently dropped me a message saying she trained someone very, very cool that I would know. And just a hint towards who it was, it was a bald guy that basically she was training um, the bald guy's girlfriend and he was obviously joining in for sessions that they were doing. So uh, this was a bald guy 
UK guy that can fight really good and, and you know, drive fast cars. You should know who that is. Um, anyways, so we completely built out her whole CRO and testing process uh, and we helped her go from 2K to 18K in MRR in four months and it's a current ongoing process working with her. And we redesigned the coaching and the consulting offers that she had going and redesigned and optimized the current UX and UI interface for her, again, coming down to the market message resonance and how people receive her message and how she, yeah, how she puts it out, right? That's really how you have to differentiate. Now, we integrated AI into her delivery and optimizing her process, which is a cool fitness kind of thing which we did for her, um, which is a story for a later time. But um, hired and trained outbound sales team and MDRs and SDRs, but, and then we also went to install social media strategy, uh, obviously that is now currently also still deployed throughout the whole process. You can go and check out her proof there, and the time frame is still ongoing. So let's quickly look into a little bit of my backstory. So for context, my name is Jean-Jacques, Janse von Rensburg, and I've been in the growth industry, the growth consulting space since 2020, and obsessing over AI, systemization, and consumer psychology, aka decision-making sciences, ever since 2019. Now in 2020, I decided to drop out of business school, okay? I was attending business school and I was also at the same time learning from other business owners that were running multi-million dollar companies and specifically principal consultants running uh, million dollar companies which I was learning from and the, the old school principles and things that I was learning from the old school education system, it was not making sense with regards to the actual physical application thereof towards what I was learning from obviously the the external people which I was going out of my way to, to get in front of them and to, to pay money there and to get in, involved with that process. So th this was not making sense to me. So the path that I was walking was not making sense to me, okay? And it became clear to me that the path for me lies light elsewhere. So I decided to take the, lo the road less traveled. That is, that is exactly what happened here, right? And I literally actually burned the boats. It's not just some fairy tale story. I literally burned the boats, okay? What I did was a fair few years ago because I, I did not know any other way to get into these, like, you know, to get in front of these principal consultants or into these smart rooms where the people were running these multi-million dollar companies. I was like, you know what? The fastest thing that I can do based on my decision making at the time was to get capital and I sold my car. I burned the boats, okay? To, and I put all that money into my education and to getting around the right people that I knew what I was doing at the time and it has paid off tenfold. Now, I share that so that you can have a clear understanding of where that comes from, okay? Now, like I've said, I've been mentored by top consultants from Bain, McKenzie, and the University of Howard. I learned a multitude of things, including the importance of understanding the role of AI, the metaverse, energy innovation, and last but not least, nuclear power turning matter into energy and energy transferring technology, AKA crypto, okay? So short-term energy prices increase and long-term decrease. New tech and creativity is required to get efficiency during these stressful times. So it was then and there that I made the hard decision to go full-time into building self-built systems. So over the past few years, I've worked with 20 plus global brands, including numerous top dogs in their respective niches, which you can clearly see with the outline case studies above, okay? So a lot of industry leaders and millionaires and some of the biggest players in the online space have asked me to advise on campaigns and overall strategy in growing the brand and brands i am there's a lot of these brands that i'm still under nda with as i've mentioned it before so uh, a big percentage of these companies obviously i respect towards the extent where we are able what we are able to talk about what we are able to mention etc i've done my due diligence therefore so these, some of these brands include Timon Creek, Creation Capital, Whamley, Manscaped, St. Petersburg Skin and Laser, uh, from Florida and the US, Skin Contractors Agency, Digital Mastery Limited, uh, Five Star Insurance, Nutritech, EHP Labs, it's a supplement company, Nutritech as well, uh, Daniel Wellington, it's a luxury watch brand, and then we have some JBL here, classic JBL, Markets.com, The Squint Shop, Rebix.com, Outsurance, Ignite, Fitness, 
uh, Fit Chef, D Rage, Gary Rom, Hair Care, uh, Switch Playground, a, a fair few of these kind of like fitness kind of like driven examples. And then we have um, EA Capital and XNES Global. You can go check out just a, to name a few of these brands which we have worked with. So enough about me, let's quickly focus on what you will get out of this master thesis, this master self called systems API thesis, okay? So from an author's note, a, what is an API? Okay, so an API is a set function and procedures allowing the creation and applications of the access to features of data and operating systems, applications, or services. APIs describe how to utilize resources and document, do, it's a, it's, this document is written and maintained so that we can be as efficient and as productive with our time together as possible, so that I do not have to repeat myself. Big reason therefore, okay? So let's have a quick overview of what happens, what is happening in the world right now. So part one here, we have the, the current market and core API thesis. So long-term goal for anyone running a business in a service, SaaS, e-commerce, anything really what you want to sell on the internet, you want to run an internet-based business, should be to generate a fuck ton of revenue and or free cash flow. And should, by now, you have, should have made the shift or the move over to selling on the internet. The C word obviously allowed us to have a lot of time, a lot of information, and the shift should have been made. So that you can now invest into your business to make it grow and obviously achieve escape velocity as the founder to enjoy ultimate freedom. Now the first stepping stone into getting to a six to a seven figure uh, yearly income is what we want to achieve here, right? For your business. And then you can come and work with us where we will help you optimize those processes. Now I've been through this process multiple times and also we have broken it down, which we are doing right now, to the exact process of how we have recently achieved this with another brand and obviously also with our strategic partners. Now, you can do this with one or two products, an ad channel and a dozen of good performing ads, okay? Here is the quick reality check for you. If it is your goal achieving a seven to an eight figure in revenue and adding multiple millions to your net worth, then you have to push the throttle hard. Okay, so why do you need expert systems designers? And I'm gonna mention something called a CAO, which is a chief AI officer. So a CAO is not an engineer who is heads down, tunnel vision building all day. He or she is like an evolutionary hunter that's aware of the, the new world, okay? Post C word, landscape, and the developments, he, and she, he or she understands how to align themselves with the technology, okay? They also are masters at linguistic communication and taking and articulating ideas from a human mind to an AI machine. Massive amounts of, therefore, this has massive amounts of efficiency because the tech does not have to sleep, eat, or mate. There is no emotions involved in the process. They are faster. They are evolving faster and they are smarter than humans, okay? It's, it's moving very, very fast. But you still need the human involved in the process there, okay? It is the ultimate combination of the new world, okay? So each company will need a CAO, other known as an evolutionary hunter. So the bounded rationality of each actor in a system determined is determined by the information. What am I saying? Okay, it's determined by the information, incentives, disincentives, goals, stressors, and constraints impending on the actor, okay? It may or may not lead to decisions that further the welfare of the system as a whole. So if they do not, putting new actors into the same system will not improve the system's overall performance. What makes the difference is redesigning Okay, it's redesigning the system to improve the information, incentives, and disincentives, goals, stressors, constraints that have an effect on the specific actors, which is self-built systems. Now, there would be no need to think about the good of other people or about the operations of the complex feedback systems. No wonder Adam Smith's model had such a strong appeal for 200 years. Now, unfortunately, the world presents us with 
a multitude of examples of people acting rationally in the short term in the best interest in their own best interest and producing aggregate results but that no one likes okay so tourists for example flock to places like Waikiki or Zamat and then obviously complain that those places have been ruined by all the tourists, farmers producing surplus of wheat, butter, cheese, and prices plummet. Fishermen overfish and destroy their own livelihoods. Corporations collectively make investment decisions that cause business cycle downturns. Poor people have more babies than they can support. Why? The question is why? It is because of what World Bank economist Herman Daly calls the invisible foot. Or Nobel winning prize winning economist Herbert Simon calls this bounded rationality. Now here's a little physical depiction of that. However, bounded rationality means that people make reasonable decisions based on the information that they have, but they do not have the perfect information especially about more distant parts of the system. So, fishermen do not know how many fish there are, or much less how many fish will be caught on the day by other fishermen, obviously on the same day. Businessmen don't know for sure what other businessmen are planning to invest in or what consumers will be willing to buy or how their products will compete. They don't know their current market share and they do not know the size of the market. Their information about these things are incomplete and delayed. So let's quickly have a look at a few trends that are happening right now. Companies and investors are waking up and demanding capital efficiency. Investors are demanding cash flow and efficient growth. The high PE ratios and earnings ratios are no longer valid at 500x revenue. Markets are contracting. Debt bubbles are being deleveraged. This creates a huge demand for efficiency. Everywhere on the news, every analyst is pinning over efficient growth. So I don't think they know the magnitude of the situation. Some businesses did not create profit at the unit level and were somehow able to scale to billions in valuation. And now the chickens are coming home and there are lots of consequences to that. See, the current shift and in the overall world with the AI, the technological revolution is here. And also what we refer to as the revenge of the nerds, okay? So the rise of artificial intelligence, AI. Artificial intelligence is projected by Elon Musk, the top E, and the team at Google's DeepMind to reach a human level performance before the end of this decade. Today, large language models such as OpenAI's GPT-4, Google's BART, and Navita's Megatron turning NLG are increasing tenfold in capabilities every year. Now in 2022, DeepMind announced Gato AI, a generalist agent, okay, AI that is able to carry out complex, t complex tasks stacking blocks to writing poetry. Later in 2022, OpenAI rolled out ChatGPT and it took the internet by storm, as we all saw, followed by AutoGPT. AI is expected to penetrate every single industry and product combined with an explosion of low-cost microsensors and deployment of high bandwidth networks and the connection to AI could AI services, okay, every day, every device will soon become intelligent. Now a toy might remember a, remember a child's face or name and appliances respond to voice commands and anticipate user needs. Then we look at AI and human collaborations. So the rise of AI as a service, platforms will enable humans to partner with AI in every aspect of their work, at every level and in every industry. Reid Hoffman, founder of LinkedIn, predicts that by 2028, every profession will have an AI co-pilot available. AI technologies will become entrenched in everyday business operation, servicing as a cognitive collaborator to employees, supporting creative tasks, and generating new ideas and tackling previous unattainable innovations. 
Now, at the same time, humanoid robots are expected to flourish in the decade ahead, whether fully autonomous, driven by GPT-4 or GPT-5, or human-based avatars, okay? These robots will take on the jobs that are dull, dangerous, or dirty, okay? Now, ultra-low-cost global gig gigabyte connectivity. So the world is rapidly being blanketed in wireless bandwidth, connecting everyone all and to the internet of things, right? So 5G connected 3 billion users, will connect 3 billion users by the end of 2025. With 6G, 100x faster already and under um, development, right? So Starlink has deployed over 3,000 satellites with a projected of over 30,000 satellites in orbit by the end of this decade. And we have also recently seen what uh, Elon Musk, the top E, has done uh, in, in Ghana and etc. And, and these developing countries. Okay, so Web3 at the Metaverse, transforming retail and education and human interactions. So Citibank eliminates the Metaverse, uh, estimates that the Metaverse could be worth 13 trillion, 13 trillion by 2030, and have up to 5 billion users powered by a combination <clears throat> of virtual reality and augmented reality, VR and AR. So 5G networks, blockchain, AI, Web3, Metaverse will transform everyday life, impacting every industry from retail, advertising, education, entertainment, high resolution and lightweight virtual reality headsets will allow people to shop for everything from clothing to new homes, from convenience of their living room and AI will know user details by body measurements and whip up fashion shows that future uh, users avatar wearing the latest uh, you know 20 designs presented on a virtual runway now there's a lot i just unpacked there so before jumping into exactly how you can utilize the tech and identify technological trends and stay ahead of your competitors I must spend a fair few minutes talking about the historical evolution of the market and its current symptoms. So right now, we have the market stretch and high inflation. So high inflation is not necessarily a bad thing. And it's not really for us to debate here, okay? When this happens, everything gets more expensive and entrepreneurs are required to recruit and apply new technologies, invent new technologies to bring about new businesses that drive the costs down for goods and services so that they can essentially lead to the population to thrive and or survive. You can also go see Kathy Wood from ARKK Thesis. Really badass lady. Now, this is a photo, a screenshot of the M1 money supply. Now, if that looks normal to you, then I'm not sure on what planet you're from. But anyways, this right here, this is what it looks like when the Fed keeps printing money. Everything around us gets more expensive and that it's also known as quantitative easing. Now, technologies will be used to handle stress. So we cannot fight to technology. There's no point in even trying, okay? This means that there are new businesses Will be, they will be popping up everywhere and they will need distribution strategies that work to make those businesses more profitable, right? So, pay traffic is more efficient than manual outbound prospecting. It's, it's infinitely more efficient, okay? Video sales letters and written long form sales letters are infinitely more efficient than sales. Advent on small teams and specialized teams as we've seen with the AI especially, right? So high inflation is creating forces on the businesses to scale the staff down, as we've recently seen all the major job cuts. Now, any staff that can be automated will be removed from the loop and replaced by machines, as we have seen with major job cuts since 2022 and early 2023, and deeper into 2023. Now, in 2018, it was far too easy to make a fortune with bad dropshipping products on Facebook ads and thanks to godlike algorithms. Now, in 2022, or rather 2020, CPMs dropped and people stayed home and had free capital, which was literally thrown out of the window in the e-com boom. In 2021, VCs were throwing around money 
and funding new ideas no matter how irrelevant as long as you could dance your name correctly after three tries, okay? So in 2022, TikTok ads started working really awesome and you were looking at numbers like Facebook in 2018 with ever improving algorithms. All the trends, if you were lucky enough to ride them in time, have secondary consequences by the market inertia and delusion, okay? So let's quickly look at this. We need to understand the current market structure. Also refer to something called AMD, but firstly, the market cycle is commonly described in four stages, which is accumulation, early adoption, and buildup of momentum, as you can see here. Then we have the expansion, Okay, accumulation, then we have the expansion. Then you have, so expansion is the mass adoption of scale. And then you have the peak, which is the tipping point where early adopters get out, okay? And then you have the recession, the decline with mass dropouts, as we can clearly see the cyclical nature, if you can refer to something uh, like, like the introduction of the Bitcoin technology, etc. we see this over and over, okay? So the stages recur throughout the economic history. The frequency and the magnitudes are dependent on economic variables, okay? Interest rates, employment rates, etc. Now, let's quickly talk about the current situation in Q2 and where we are obviously moving towards. So number one, we had massive layoffs across the tech industry. We had full-blown war between Russia and Ukraine. China increased the plant closure due to zero COVID strategy. Miscalculations and bad capital efficiency from previous years. Consumer sentiment index is reaching an all-time low, okay? You can also go and look at the data extraction sources here. Now we have the e-commerce growth rate is also tanking after a peak in 2020, right? As we can clearly see here. Recession, war and inflation and lowering purchasing powers are stressing almost everyone and forcing adaptation. It is survival of the fittest right now you have one of two options number one is you can watch from the sidelines not knowing which lever to pull and working completely capital inefficient leading to your business slowly declining and your competitor slowly stealing your market share which eventually leads to your business being crushed or you can seize this opportunity to cut off any fat in your business, boost the revenue and profitability by adapting, innovating and leveraging new technologies like AI. Actually leveraging new technologies like AI. Physical application. Thrive in this difficult economic situation, like thrive in this difficult economic situation, all whilst outpacing your competition and dominating your market now and in the future and reaching escape velocity as the founder. Now, in my opinion, there is only one feasible option, and that is the core thesis leveraging BOS systems and Sentinel AGI. So here is our core thesis. Scaling to multiple eight figures in yearly revenue in this current market structure means creating your own market and leveraging the blue ocean and the product market 50.0 strategy which we have developed which is, includes aligning yourself with the new technology the new model for capital efficient growth in 2023 and beyond see the blue ocean strategy is a simultaneous pursuit of differentiation and low cost to open up a new market space okay so and it is creating new demand it is about capturing is about creating and capturing unconstructed uncon uh, market space thereby making the competition irrelevant so here what are we looking at here you do not want to be this guy you do not want to be this guy you do not want to be that guy okay you want to be this guy chilling in his boat in the cell phone systems blue ocean okay so it is based on the view that the market boundaries and industry structures are given and not are not given and can be reconstructed by the actions and the beliefs of the industry players meaning the best companies create a market but the question is how can we create our own market by definition market research will not help you need to solve for your own value hypothesis your product market fit and then solve for your growth hypothesis thereafter which is the scale component 
you need to align in the resonance of the channel with your communicated value proposition, the USP, in a way that avoids revenue divergence or roller coasters, okay? You then need to acquire more and more customers that are less aware and interested in order to reach scale. The old way of making product market fit was quite simple. We just sell something that people buy, right? Like the good old model. However, people would choose products based on gut instincts and then use genetic phrases used, you know, obviously generated around their marketing. Or even worse, they would simply steal a USB and a value hypothesis of their competitors by simply slapping the brand to it. A building useful, unique, useful stuff that people actually want requires two sets of data streams, okay? So number one is environmental-based data, which is the, in the current realm of possibilities, current technologies, trends, active forces, and winds blowing in that environment. And then number two is customer data activities that the customer is trying to do or is doing, right? The path that they are on and or the specific forces acting on them. So the picture here is obviously an illustration thereof. We have the time dependent path of the customer overlaid on the environmental force fields. Which is why it is so easy back in the day to do solid numbers with the same products. Buying media on different channels was so cheap that you could do profits with basic product market fit. Ads and creative was stupid simple to run. Marketing giants had the lead position because they were first to market, not because they had cutting edge advertising strategies. Very, very simple. Have to understand that point. If we look at the market today as described above, we are in a unique circumstances with fundamental shifts in consumer behavior and or other issues that have arisen as a result of iOS 14. This stuff will always happen. We have to be ready, therefore. The loss of data due to tracking means that costs are rising because now we have to spend more to get, we have to spend more to get reliable data, right? And last but not least, we have reached a certain level of market saturation because of the amount of advertisers reached that pinnacle and consumers are bombarded by oversupply of offers and products and their minds have been subconsciously programmed to scroll past your ad. Okay, so the former blue ocean turns into a red ocean. For example, our clients and good friend Timon Creek recently, one of our clients obviously, and friend Timon Creek recently said that he attributed a lot of his success to the right timing and the positioning back in 2022. Meaning that he first, he had the first mover's advantage, which is so important in this current market cycle, okay? So he had a really, really unique value prop which 97% of people really, really wanted and still want, okay? And I will go as far ahead, like I will go as far to say that it is impossible to catch up to him right now. But it is also important, uh, but it is also, this also means that the trajectory of the brand would look completely different if he started now in 2023, right? As we started working together in early 2022, I told him that there will be a half-life to his current offer because of how good it is, right? And that is just the cyclical nature of things and the meaningful, you know, actions behind people. So people will buy his stuff and they will ideally try to copy it and make it theirs. That's in the nature of human beings, okay? So ultimately meaning that it is almost import, impossible to achieve success following the same footsteps, at least following the old strategies. If I refer to the old strategies, it's simply referring to old school sales and marketing tactics, some like stuff like relying on old school kind of ads, relying on like cute little things like awareness campaigns or like a webinar or any of these, you know, tactics like like a lead magnet or whatever, all these old school strategies, right? So to achieve sustainable success, we have to create our own artificial blue ocean. Test, this leads to the lower acquisition costs, stable performance in MER, and obviously at scale, getting more market share and dominating competitors. 
Now you may think, but how do I do this in a popular niche with no obvious differentiation possibilities like shoes, fashion, supplements, health, etc. right? So the answer is product market fit 2.0, the SPS jetpack, because look, how do you think we, we were able to not only do this once, but multiple times and specifically focusing on uh, Timon's obviously case study and how we did that, how we were able to have an impact through on the credibility, influence and the power perspective of things and also bring in the business components on how we optimize our thinking and our strategy moving towards what we do, right? You will also see an uh, explanation thereof in other case study examples with our partners. So um, when I say partners, I'm talking in terms of strategic uh, players. So because these are the top secrets, okay, the top secret strategies that only the 1% of growth oriented people truly understand and apply. So it is truly a strong influence for the success of the case studies we produce and you see what you will see above, okay? So our goal is to artificially create a blue ocean which sets us apart from the competition, makes us independent from the market and the situation and attract our ideal customers. The secret is in finding a message that resonates with your customers exactly what we what we do for all of our clients right is that you can see the dig the, the differentiation between these two images so figure one shows what happens when you introduce product market fit into a basic product market uh, into a basic market with basic product market fit similar to everyone else okay there's a delta between the market what they really want and the messaging you are broadcasting to them, meaning you will never really resonate with the market and miss high amplitudes of the wavelength. So how do you think we were able to, as I've said again, help Timon accumulate 2.6 million followers and also dominate on the business perspective, right? The, the mult, multiple realms of, of obviously those perspectives. So you somehow managed to generate initial traction and revenue but aren't able to scale past eight figures a year, let alone reach a solid level of profitability. So figure two shows that what happens when you broadcast a message that resonates with the market and results in a massive pull and a massive word of mouth and seemingly infinite scale whilst being profitable. Again, client case study examples, okay? So this is the potential of creating your own blue ocean and product market fit 2.0. So I put this in blue because it's really important. Solving for product market fit and creating millions of dollars in cash and an equity value out of thin air is simple, it's no simple task, okay? In physics, there is something called the law of conversion and energy that states energy can neither be created or destroyed, it can only be transferred. This can be applied to the environment too. So if you don't already have a ton of capital stored energy, you will be able to exchange your calories or your team's calories for competitors' capital, or well, rather not competitors, for customers' capital in the form of a payment. If you have capital, you can charge people without capital to obviously extend the calories to go through this process. However, okay, you should still stay involved. It will be a lot of work for anyone going through this process, but it is efficiently more effective and the effectiveness um, it's the most effective way of actually reaching to your goal and your goal obviously which would be product market fit 2.0 that more than anything else you have ever come across so by combining the right positioning with the branding and the brand alignment and meeting the needs of the desires of the market we create a unique access channel which you can obviously profitably scale in the process. So to drive the points home here is what happens over the time as you try and apply the scale, uh, well obviously within inside of the market you have basic product market, two, uh, product market fit which has a ceiling and you have product market fit 2.0 which is the South Systems Jetpack, you have scale and no ceiling, okay? So what you will understand by now is that in order to create a blue ocean in a red ocean market is you will need Deep understanding and the ability to identify opportunities that others have overlooked or cannot simply see. And there's a term we refer to with inside of Southfield uh, when we work with these companies is that you need fresh eyes from the outside. You need a fresh perspective, fresh eyes 
that are not you know so solely drilled into the company and so solely in the machine all the time you need fresh eyes and a perspective from the outside okay the answer lies specifically in data so data is the key to unlocking insights into customer behavior look at our process here okay one of the uh, obviously data driven processes so into customer behavior markets trends and industry changes it can help us identify new opportunities and make informed decisions about our business development and growth strategy but traditional market research methods are often inadequate or identifying new opportunities is ra in a rapid changing uh, market environment is kind of hard, right? You have to stay on the ball with that. So there, this is where we introduce the AI and machine learning, okay? So how can we leverage AI and machine learning uh, to make better strategical decisions? So the first step is to collect and analyze the data. This can be done through various methods such as customer surveys, analytics, social media monitoring. And once we have collected the data, we can use AI and machine learning algorithms to identify patterns, trends, and make predictions about future customer behaviors because it's about humans at the end of the day, right? And if you understand how important the AI is, you understand the relationship thereof. So all of the inputs, like all of this input is a lot, okay? I understand that. So let me precisely conclude this before jumping into exact process synthesis on how we apply all of this for um, our uh, businesses and brands that we work with, right? So at a strategic level, you want to double down in your core skill sets and obviously the most profitable market segments whilst shredding less valuable aspects of your business, okay? Now, obviously trimming the fat, you're artificially creating a blue ocean in your market which enables rapid profitable growth. Now, in terms of business development, you're leveraging data points and AI to revolutionize your processes and reducing the resonance needed to generate and generate output and ultimately improving margins. Now, those who can adapt and execute will transition to the new model of capital efficient growth and leveraging new technologies for explosive and hyper profitable growth. So part two of the SBS.io hyper growth model Okay, so the growth protocol or the model is cutting edge frameworks designed to drive sustainable growth for your brand, okay? Now, it is the result of years of experience working uh, with our teams and strategic partners and millions of dollars invested and su successful partnerships with uh, obviously a multitude of the brands that we have worked with. Now. At its core, it is built on the foundations of holistic data mastering, growth strategy, testing programs, and full funnel optimization. So by leveraging these four key pillars, we can achieve rapid and sustainable growth, and even in the face of highly competitive markets, which you have seen with insurance, with medicine, etc., etc., right? Um, now, the, and obviously the, the clearly example of the, the Swan Creek uh, case study, right? So the key is to focus on mastering data and leveraging new technologies, aligning yourself with the technologies and embracing change. So by setting up tracking and collecting both quantitative and qualitative data for the brands that we work with, we can gain a deep understanding of user behavior and consumer psychology. This then can be used to identify low hanging fruits essentially and big leverage levers allowing the brand to really have a data-driven approach when it comes to decisions and inevitably to help them optimize their full funnel uh, conversion um, processes, right? So the growth strategy component of the model provides brands with a roadmap for sustainable growth. By understanding their target audience and what motivates them to buy, brands can create a compelling offer and optimize the branding, the UX, the UI, and the copy to resonate with the customers. Now, in order to test and iterate on these strategies, the model includes rapid testing approach with, a multi with multiple data and uh, tests conducted each month. Now, this specific flywheel effect of the optimized conversion rate and at, this, at the strategy level, it's basically iterating um, this leads to sustainable growth and a higher customer lifetime value. So the compounding effect always wins in the long run, right? 
So phase number one here is holistic data mastering and systems design. The purpose here is to build solid foundations of a data-driven decision-making and gain deep insight into target audiences. The outcome, again, here is a well-integrated tech stack with comprehensive data analysis and obviously a deep understanding of the target audience, which you can check obviously this straight line come, uh, straight line here, the straight line system here. So it's the tech stack, it's the collecting the data points, holistic data analysis, accelerated, um, obviously AI, and then data uh, with, when it comes to the deep targeting audience and understanding. So the tech stack. Many organizations have no data or their data is flawed, okay? This is due to mistakes and the tracking and the cleaning thereof. So therefore we have set up targeted tracking to understand exactly how our users are behaving, right? Now there are several types of data points we collect and we analyze to target a holistic data picture of the behavioral um, behavior and the consumer psychology. Well, let's quickly look at the quantitative data such as the KPIs, the CRV, the average order value, the bounce rate, the qualitative data on the other side, we have characteristics like questionnaires, interviews, and observations. Now here's an overview of what that tech stack looks like. You can look at the Google Tag Manager, the Google Analytics, the Hotjar, the Microsoft Clarity, just to name a few of the tools that we use. So we have a whole team of data analysts, as I have mentioned, uh, just focus on setting up these tools because the data is incredibly valuable as, and as soon as the tracking has been set up and enough data is available, the qualitative and the quantitative data can be evaluated. So at the same time, having all of these tracking tools set up, it also allows us to build warning systems that trigger as soon as the deviations from the targets are detected in the data. It enables us to act immediately in event of unforeseen circumstances and we avoid a loss in revenue. So overall, a view of the current systems architecture, what we will do, said um, business agnostic, business specific, is that we will look at what the current management and leadership structures are like, what the current sales process are like, what the current financial systems and teams are like, the marketing, the dollars, etc., the teams, the sales, what everything is happening in there. And we will look at the AI architecture. Is it built fit or built not? And then we look at collecting data uh, points and holistic data analysis. We define the key data points and the metrics to be collected across the customer journey. We consolidate data forms. Uh, we consolidate rather data from uh, sources to ensure holistic analysis and then conduct in-depth analysis of collecting data, identifying trends, patterns, and areas of improvements. And here is a whole full rundown of a full course on Google Tag Manager and complete Google Analytics uh, setup. And if you don't know how to do that, okay? Go check that out, very, very good stuff. Now, uh, collecting qualitative data visualized and the collecting of the quantitative data visualized. Now, both of these, obviously you can request the SOP, just uh, hit me a message in uh, the comment section down below, say Hotjar SOP, and I will make sure that we will get it over to you. So as soon as enough data is available, you need a data analyst to analyze the data and uncover low hanging fruits and big leverage activities immediately. So immediately flexible is site speed and we obviously, you know, you can request the, the website loading flash SOP, which we call inside of self build. And then we look at a few technical problems, right? So for understanding low hanging fruits, we pull data into a spreadsheet, which is called the Napoleon uh, Bonaparte deck for conversion rate uh, data template, right? So you can uh, also click here, go check what that looks like. And then we look at the pages with high bounce rates, products with low add to cart. Obviously this is industry specific, um, P2P view rates, uh, website overall view rates, um, abandonment cart checkout, if it's something in, in the sense of e-commerce. Now, in a combination of different data sources that we combine with a holistic, again, picture of user behavior and uh, on the sides in the, the GA, you see high bounce rate on a PDP, then watch the hot chart session recordings to understand what is going on. Okay, so example is a dish, 
Additionally, and a combination with data from the marketing gives us a deeper insight into user motivation, okay? And understanding about what motivates them to buy. That's the big question here, right? And there's a deep uh, explanation video coming on that real soon. So the more data that is collected, the more possibilities we have in terms of analysis. So think big data at certain points, we can use AI, machine learning algorithms to do real, um, real time personalization for every single user. But you do not want to sit around all day going through this, okay, in a manual fashion. You want to be able to automate this process and leverage new technologies. So SBS.io, AI quantum leap advantage. So we've built a software that connects with the GA, Shopify, and other tools, okay, on the net. And what it does is it intersects all the data points of the business. We can leverage this a new technology to uh, automate the data analysis and maximize the efficiency. Now, for a uh, for a market and a competitor research, we pull up every single aspect of the funnel uh, and with the creative targeting, the pages, the user flow, the, the checkouts, the emails, the, the intro flows, which enables us to stay on cutting edge and ahead of the competition, as you can see a screenshot thereof, one of the examples. So leveraging AI is crucial, okay, uh, to efficiently managing customer data and gaining a deep, understanding of target audience and the market. So using this, we can quickly process large volumes of data, segment customers based on their behavior and preferences around our uncovering hidden patterns, basically. When we look at something like customer service, we improve customer service systems in one of the most, it's, it's basically one of the most effective areas of deploying language understanding systems. Now let's look at a couple of examples where text classifiers improve these systems. So topic classifiers and message routing. So for businesses that deal with large amount of communications and lots of uh, time and effort can be saved automatically by routing a customer messages to people who can resolve them. So this routing can either be actually done through forwarding an email, okay, or integrating with customer service softwares like Zendesk and Freshdesk. So that assigns the relevant person to look at the ticket. So more advanced systems is one that can automatically answer frequently asked questions instead of routing them uh, to an agent to answer them repeatedly. And this is, com this is a common use case for chatbots to handle, obviously, in terms of looking at the new world chatbots, not the old school ones, okay? So you can have a deep uh, overview of the chatbots and the intent classification here, but that's for another time. I also wanna quickly scrape the surface with content moderation, okay? So a significant portion of human interaction now happens online through social media, online forums, groups, chatbots, etc., or other chat groups, Discord, Slack, and um, more often or not, these online communities need moderation to keep their communities safe, okay? Um, and that's also where the, the sentiment uh, analysis of things comes in. And that's also something I just wanna mention there for, um, yeah, for this piece here. So moving over to um, leading uh, to a comprehensive and data-driven understanding of your target audience enables you to tailor your marketing and your product strategies to better resonate with the market, okay? And the customers, essentially. Now, deep target audiences and understanding the audience, uh, basically what we refer to as social engineering, the message, okay? So the deep target audience and understanding achieved, this is achieved through AI-powered data analysis from the basis from optimizing the entire customer journey. So let me show you how to combine all of these quantitative and qualitative data points and use scientific-based methods to get a deep understanding about the important factors of the customer. Like this all leads to why they buy, their motivations. And we can have a deep dive into this at a later stage, but we're gonna briefly scrape the surface here on the limbic map and the motive compass. And like I said, there's a deep dive video coming on this really, really soon. We can look at the color perspectives at uh, the different kinds of dopamine, testosterone, oxytocin, and how that connects to certain colors. And obviously, as you can see here, we look at things like personality types, green, red, yellow, blue. And another thing here is 
we outlined this throughout this uh, SBS New World Edge, looking at the limbic triggers and essentially all of those things, right? The second most important factor is that why they do not buy. So based on the data, you can derive their fears, their uncertainties, their doubts, and this tells you how you need to position the product for the highest conversion possible. And this tells you which psychological triggers uh, to use uh, with the targeted audience, which is outlined in this document down below. So now let's look at a physical application here of how we applied this to a D2C skin brand with one of our strategic partners. So through this extensive research and data analysis, analysis, we were able to identify the exact messaging that resonated with the target audience. We found that the most effective psychological triggers to drive conversion rates was social proof. Now using this information, we updated their homepage with a value proposition that spoke directly to the target audience and their desires. We also included social proof in the form of customer testimonials, reviews, which helped build brand, obviously build the trust and build brand and credibility with potential customers. Now, as more data is collected and various dynamic elements became available, the algorithms can test, optimize the customer journeys more granularly and this leads to an increase of the obviously overall performance in a single multi-funnel obviously strategies of the store and or website. Now, also learning that the emerging, uh, emerge from what, what will be learned through the um, process basically is that we have a positive feedback loop and an upward spiral because we can transfer them to the acquisition and retention strategies. Elements that are displayed dynamically on the store can be used beforehand and in the marketing and in post-purchase processes. Now, to increase conversion rates and to enhance retention to boost the obviously the purchase performance and additionally this can you be used and market ideation um, to better address the target audience or quickly and efficiently to tap into the target audience with minimal risk. So applying consumer psychology here is super important. We look at the, the current situation, brand uh, operate, operators change, well rather, brand operators change store according to copycat and or the HIPPO principle. So let's quickly look at that. Copycat, go to competitor's site and copy design elements without knowing whether the competitors actually tested and proven their design um, elements and or not, right? So HIPPO principle, supervisor specifically changes, uh, the supervisor specifically changes purely based on own preferences, okay? Without knowing what to um, impact and the changes, what the actual impact will have or the changes will have in, in the long run, okay? It's because it's just, it's just the simple psychological component. So they invest resources to implement an arbitrary changes and cannot properly analyze the impact of these changes, okay? So here is the better way of doing it. So you want to target group analysis in, uh, you want to target group analysis, use roughly to determine which user segment are attracted to the store and or brand through the marketing, okay? So based on the target group analysis, the behavioral patterns with the highest conversion rate probably are determined and tested, okay? So though the test results will determine the actual performance of the behavioral patterns of the group, based on the performance of the behavioral patterns, we get to know the target group even better and increase the probability of, fut of winning future tests as we learn more and more about what works and what does not work for a large group and an audience, right? So the feedback loop of the upward spiral. So the more we test, the better we understand the target audience, the better the results become. See, the faster the performance of the business increases. We have implicit, something called implicit response testing, also known as IRTs. So I'm gonna, also quickly go over this and you can have a deeper dive into this at a later stage, but implicit response testing is one of the fastest growing approaches in the market research, okay? Online objectives and cross um, effective, they are capturing consumers immediate gut instincts or subconscious responses to brands, campaigns, and or new products and concepts or packaging designs and vast arrays of other marketing related outputs. Now, an example of this is when Apple 
released their new goggles, okay? You clearly saw on that one video I saw, basically, I don't know if you have seen it, but go look at it. What happened is that they released this and you saw the whole crowd say, releasing Apple headsets from X amount of price. And they, the whole crowd went like, oh, now that is a great example thereof, okay? So free from the biases of the uh, conscious rationalization and uh, distracting ploys inherent in the quantitative and the qualitative research, IRTs offer uh, growth consultants a chance to study consumers at deep and obviously um, the deep emotional levels to predict their behaviors and more accurately and more, you know, obviously effective ever. Because previously there were like these old school tactics and they just weren't um, based on a quant cycle, right? So, but how do we know that IRTs work now? And should clients look out, what should you look out for when obviously doing, uh, for when commissioning implicit studies? Now, as I said, you can go and have a deep dive into that. However, what I will say, click here, have a deep dive into that. But what I will say is this, okay? Um, for many SMEs to global multinationals, IRTs are set to become a mainstream part of the market research. Um, mixed with providing missing implicit pieces uh, of the jigsaw. So particularly when combined with established explicit approaches, IRTs now permit marketers to understand consumers from a 360 degree perspective and to integrate their explicit variable feedbacks with the subconscious thoughts, feelings, influences, and or um, inaccessible to the conscious um, introspections, also known as some old school things like the ZMAT, right? Um, no more ZMAT. If you know, you know, right? So let's move over to phase two. Now we're always getting closer to the end of this. Um, so yeah, uh, sit tight, we're almost done. So phase two, full funnel conversion and optimization. So purpose here is to maximize the overall conversion at every stage of the funnel and create a seamless customer journey, right? Optimizing the website, um, the website building, uh, basically to, to enable a building of a better mousetrap, okay? So the outcome here is increased conversion rates, um, improved customer experience and stronger brand positioning. So we have the low hanging fruit, we have the product market 2.0, uh, 2 which is the call friendly offer. We have the landing pages. We have the full funnel and CRO. And we have the branding optimizing UX UI, obviously full optimization protocol thereof. So low hanging fruit shares, we identify quick wins, okay? And easy to implement with immediate impact on the uh, conversions and prioritize the low hanging fruits based on the potential ROI of the implementation. So resources here is we have uh, the SOP for low hanging fruits on the psychological fruits. You can go check that out. And if there is any other example audits, you can just uh, simply go ahead, as I've stated, uh, request it in the comment section down below, and I will make sure that we get it over to you. So product market fit 2.0 and cold friendly offer. So what we want to do is we want to refine product market fit on a deep target audience and understanding and basically develop compelling cold friendly offers that resonate with new customers and drive conversions. We're going to look at a few examples now. Now, so the product market to um, the product market fit 2.0 application. So let's go through the, the norms of case study uh, together with one of our strategic partners where we follow this concept, which shows the magnitude of scale possible when you crack product market fit 2.0, they went from zero to 10 million in less than 12 months. Mind blowing, right? So here's the execution plan we always follow. Number one, we have market identification and validation, okay? It's the N to T to P. So we determine the niche, the transformation and the price. Then we look at the mechanism, which is mechanism validation, which is the M, and we identify the mechanism used to deliver the transformation and the resulting contribution. Then we have the access channel validation, which is the A. So we find the traffic conversion mechanism combined uh, in combination with the results to let leads to the fastest profitable unit case. Okay. Now the niche here is female wellness with two buyer personas. We have the boyfriend buying it for the girlfriend to increase his 
uh, chances of a good relationship with the girlfriend, obviously, right? Better relationship is the selling point. And then you have the girlfriend buying it for themselves to decrease the pain threshold which they are experiencing uh, on, on a cycle, right? So now the transformation is instant relief of period pain and soothing period cramps, relaxing muscles and reducing bloating. Now the price here is on a low end transformation to solve both of those for $99, which makes logical sense. Now, the mechanism is the product called Mania, okay? Maya, rather, uh, with dynamic heat and message therapy. Now, the access channels are Meta as main push channel and Google as main pull channel, okay? So the traffic and the conversion mechanism that led to a highly profitable growth case were the unique angles used in the marketing this product and having high, obviously, optimized store front end. So highly profitable Unicase, we have a product with over 80% gross margin. We have solid EPC, CRV, AOV, and CPC ratio. Front end is highly profitable and capital efficient growth. And obviously this leads to escape velocity for you as the founder, right? Now, second one here is we have a cold friendly offer application. Let's go through one of, uh, another one of our strategic partner case studies of the Kino body, right? So Kino body, where we created new offers that resonated well with cold audiences. So the niche is young men who desire high status, a ripped look dating success to be in the top 1% of men. Right now, the transformation is to skyrocket testosterone, build leaner and stronger bodies in 30 days. Now, again, the price of the transformation is set at a no-brainer $99. Okay, and the mechanism is the bundle of the Kino Mojo testosterone supplement, Kino Nitro, enhanced circulation, etc., etc. This is the Mojo Mastery program. Obviously, is the keys to unlocking which they really what they really really want. Right. So the traffic and conversion mechanism here is using a VSL as a creative that is based around the current social media narrative and pushes traffic to the unique landing pages, also looking at cultural, economical um, and world um, yeah, economic events. So you can have a deeper dive into this case study here. Just request how we went ahead and spent $165,000 a day on ads. Um, and then next one here is a testing price. So turbo case study here. You want to make sure you sure to have the right pr uh, price point so in the case of bumping up the price by ten dollars didn't affect the cvr at all therefore you can increase the average order value and have the same conversion rate and still make more money right now finding the sweet spot that your customers is willing to pay obviously is key right so th this is the, the test uh, different bundles from the uh, Wildo, Wildo case study. Um, here, um, obviously, is what we looked at, right? So here's the test that we ran on the PDP after integrating different bundles. Now, we pre-selected the highest AOV bundle. The results of the conversion rate was 0 to 9.1%. The average order value was 21 at uh, 0.03%. And the average order value was 19.96%. So similar to uh, the, turbo, uh, the turbo tube example of the CVR didn't really change, but the AOV and the RPU had significant improvements. So the next step is to test uh, different cross and upsells to get the most out of your AOV and the front end profitable, right? So full website plus full CRO. Now, analyze the entire customer journey to identify, we always start with the conversion, we always start there with the conversion and the bottlenecks and the opportunities for optimization. Then we implement data-driven strategies to optimize each stage of the funnel from the awareness to the purchase to the retention. Homepage example, obviously value proposition, call to action, social proof, moving over to the persuasive copy, hidden pains, slow desired outcomes, obviously with a compelling storyline. Then we have the building of the trust, the reviews, the PR brand, the show happy customers and the social proof. Then moving down over, you can uh, check out the uh, mimic of the sales page here uh, of the Udi and or the Nomzik uh, product there. So 
This leads us to the landing page and the pre-sale pages. So sometimes we design and optimize high converting landing pages and pre-sale pages that are tailored uh, to the target audiences, right? Well, segmented. So landing pages designed specifically for uh, particular campaigns or product promotions and can provide visitors with targeted and relevant experiences. Now, tailoring the content of the landing page to the message of the overall campaign and the promotion with a clear call to action can attract more visitors, aka customers for your business, right? So landing pages example here, and you can go ahead and request a Figma if you wanna see that. Obviously, I'm not gonna spin too much wheels on that. However, I'm gonna come straight here to the better alignment with the ads and keywords using consistent messaging designs and keywords between your ad and landing page message uh, match increases the relevance of the visitors. It's a cohesive experience, right? Now, uh, moving to the branding and optimizing UX slash UI copy. So enhance website UX UI to create a seamless and enjoyable browsing and shopping experience that align brand elements, increase messaging, visuals, tone with the target audience and uh, basically the, the preferences of the, um, obviously the, the expectations, right? Now, many online stores have great products. Most visitors are also interested in the products and would benefit from the products. But unfortunately, the site does not manage to convince the visitors or add value to the, uh, to the product because the copy does not address the visitors, the site does not match the product in terms of design, or the site makes unnecessarily, it makes it unnecessarily difficult for the visitors to interact with it and to get obviously to their destination, too much friction in the process, right? So competitors with inferior products convince potential customers with appealing design and at the same time can retrieve higher prices. So optimizing the copy plus the UX and the UI allows us to attract customers cheaper and make more profit with them because you have message, uh, a message that match, right? So consistent and appealing design strengthens the brand image overall. The potential for the brand ambassador to appear, who in then returns represents the brand and the convinces the other potential customers to buy. And I will also connect it to, have, I've mentioned this on my channel before, uh, information agnostic with all of the AI, the AI is getting so good that we will not know whether you and I are talking to a robot or whether you and I are talking to a person. That's why people will start to distrust a lot of this robot stuff because they want human interaction and experience. They want credibility connected to sources of information and different products, okay? Really, really important. So higher market cap uh, capitulation and possibilities to address all customer segments to earn money with all customer segments and not to leave it uh, to the competition to take your market share, right? So phase three, rapid testing uh, approach. So as we are getting closer to finalizing uh, this, this puzzle here, with well, the purpose here is to quickly identify and implement conversion rate optimization, which is the CRO. Uh, improvements that have most significant impact of the revenue growth. So the outcome here is streamlined data driven processes that leads to increased overall rates uh, of the revenue. So you have the testing, you have the holistic CRO, you have the rapid testing, and you have the strategical iteration. So the testing program looks like this. So we established a testing framework and methodology to prioritize and implement CRO tests. So we define the key performance indicators, um, and many times we also look at things like OKRs, but for each test, um, and we set clear goals and success criteria, right? So we develop testing calendar to ensure that the conditions and the flows of the test are systematic and approaches to the conversion rate, right? Obviously to optimize. So the success of these testing programs depend on two factors. Number one, we have testing velocity. Number two, we have the testing success. With the testing velocity, it, we look at how many tests are performed in a given time. And with testing success, what is uplift, uh, what uplift is achieved when the tests are successful. Now the current symptoms is most store owners and online business owners and CRO agencies are whack, okay? With the, both of these because they do not know the right testing process to get reliable results. Those are facts. These are using, they are specifically using wrong methodologies to evaluate results and the types of tests to fit velocity testing success 
works best for their use cases, right? So ultimately their results aren't reliable because they do not follow this statistical SOP, which is outlined over here, a full deep dive you can have in there with your team. However, the prob uh, probability and the statistical significance explained in a visual, I'm a visual guy, so you can go and check that out there. So this all leads to founders wasting valuable resources to produce unreliable results with wrong A-B testing processes, which they implement on their store, believing to increase their sales while actually decreasing them and having a false positive. So most testing programs do not generate data and they tie up unnecessary resources, right? And the truths um, the, thus are for the garbage can, right? So I will also link a video here real soon, uh, which will be released on our channel, where we will have an internal deep, maybe we'll release it on the channel, maybe we'll not, but it will be on this document where we have, we'll have an internal deep dive into um, data mastery with a data mastery class there. So we also set up a proper testing program. So we have testing velocity, so it enables the maximum number of possible tests and uh, on the store through different uh, testing approaches, sequential A-B testing, parallel A-B testing, etc. to name a few. Now, testing success, number two point here, is that using insight from the other points, so targeted group analysis, etc., tests with high win probability and uplift probability, okay? So, through our approach, we can get the maximum out of tests to uplift generating uh, reliable results that the customer can rely on or make. Informed decisions of their business based upon um, the, so based upon uh, those results. So at the same time, we learn more about the target group throughout reliable results, right? So we want a, a full holistic CRO approach. So we consider the entire customer journey from awareness to conversion to identifying areas of friction and potential improvements and we evaluate touch points and channels such as websites, social media, email marketing and paid advertising to ensure a cohesive experience and collaborate with cross-functional uh, cross teams to align CRO efforts with overall business goals and objectives. Okay, you can also go and look at what our CRO protocol template looks like, and then uh, we are, and then we are basically going to touch on something called rapid testing. Now, we execute high impact tests to quick, uh, quickly using agile testing methodologies and tools that we analyze. So we test results in the real time to draw insights and make data driven decisions. And we iterate and we optimize based on the insights and ensuring the continuous improvements of the maximum impact. Now, here we showcase the desired outcomes of the users from the before and after state and we increase user motivation to buy the product. So the current results um, show that the second variation of the uh, is outperforming the, uh, the control obviously. So the second variation is performing better on new users. RBU increased from one uh, nine, $1.96 well, to $2.43. Sample size, just over a thousand. AOV increased from 140 to 149. And the change in the CR was 16.5. So then we're gonna look at strategical iteration and regularly review and update the overall CRO strategy based on the tests and the insights, identify new opportunities to improve and adjust the testing program as needed, right? Share new learnings across organization, foster a culture of continuous improving and obviously creative data-driven decision-making. Now, phase four, our last phase here, um, is to pro propose to a continuous, uh, to propose uh, continuous, refine and optimize growth strategies focusing on acquisition, retention, decision-making processes, and brand value. Now, outcome here is a sustainable and scalable growth strategy that leads to multiple seven figures in revenue whilst maintaining profitability. We want to optimize acquisition, optimize retention, optimize decision-making, grow brand value, and then we have the exit strategy. So the optimizing of the acquisition is that we analyze customer 
acquisition data to identify high-performing channel campaigns and audiences uh, and segmented audiences. We refine the targeting messaging and creative assets based on data-driven insights and continuously test and iterate acquisition strategies to maximize the ROI and reduce customer acquisition, other known as the CAC. Now, closely exchange, we closely take these learnings and we exchange this with our performance marketing team and obviously you can request a client case study thereof. Okay, so we know the impact of every change with the empirical results because the effect is directly measurable. Okay, so we have certain T in our decision making and get away from gut based decisions, right? And run a bet. We essentially the ads run way, way better and smoother, and we get engagement and lower CPMs and CPAs. So then we want to look over at optimizing retention. Now, one of our really big components, which we um, obviously are doing for a lot of our, I mean, all of the clients that we work with, is essentially optimizing retention and creating a community based environment and structure framework. There, there's we have developed a framework where we obviously unpack there's about eight core principles when we're designing um, this uh, community, looking at different obviously outlines and perspectives. Um, and this allows us to monitor customer retention metrics such as repeat purchase rates and customer lifetime value. And this is also why this is so important of pushing um, towards building an ecosystem of a community, okay? So uh, this, let me, let me bring it back. To monitor customer retention and metrics such as repeat purchase rates, customer lifetime value, and to identify areas of improvement. So we developed this, uh, this st strategies to increase customer engagement, satisfaction and loyalty, leverage customer segmentation and personalization to deliver relevant and timely offers, content and communities. So that's why it's so important to set up, build up a community structure, whether it's on, uh, doesn't matter what platform it is, okay, this is industry specific as well, but we have obviously tested a few of these platforms and we've seen what works and what does not work. However, the gamification principle is super, super important that is inside of our frameworks, which we have developed. So, um, establish a data-driven culture that empowers teams to make informed decisions based on, based on insights and analytics, implement systems for tracking and sharing key learnings across organizations, foster a culture of experimentation and learning. <clears throat> And we want to encourage teams to test new <clears throat> ideas and iterate on strategies, right? <clears throat> so having a data-driven approach to run experiments supports you to make better decisions with the compound effect over time. Now making bad decisions also compounds against you and obviously that's a whole opportunity cost component which we're looking at. Now, Growing brand value and exit structure, which is so important for all of the companies that we work with. Planning your exit strategy at the beginning of your business journey is essential for you to ensuring a smooth and successful exit when the time comes. It is also important to identify your long-term goals and how you plan to achieve them through sales or transfer of your business. Having a clear and well thought through exit plan can help you make better decisions and increase the value of your business. We want to establish this mindset early on so that this decision making process is, is laid out for the long term. And we've been through this process um, multiple times, obviously um, in connection with our strategic partners. So you can go look at the sample systems um, ROI tool here basically. And as we drill this down to the Tesseract ROI tool, um, and as we drill this down to basically obvious, summarizing everything that we went through here from getting you from seven to multiple eight figures is that we want to create business development strategy. We want to have a deep dive into understanding your data and market situation. We want a competitive advantage with consumer psychology application. We want, a f uh, we want to fix all um, low hanging fruits first. Okay, then we want to fine tune Product Market Fit 2.0 and create a blue ocean with traffic conversion mechanism. We want to optimize the complete funnel. We want to run CRO programs and test aggressively. Then we want a rapid strategy of experiment and iteration. We want to then obviously leverage the AI architecture and machine learning to make organizational structures leaner and more efficient. And we want to embrace cross organizational learnings and data driven culture. We want to optimize the acquisition and retention. We want to determine the market um, 
the marketers at world of market and the competition. We wanted to grow brand value and prepare for exit. And we want to reach escape velocity for the founder, which is obviously the most important part of this whole video. And then establish trust to secure future for family life. And then obviously go ahead and thank self built systems. Now, it is factually simple to get to a working eight figure brand or multiple eight figures. And we have proven it several times now. All you need to do is complete the right steps in the correct order and ensure customization. So solving the things in the rec correct process um, or steps. Like, can smart founders do this on their own? Which is the question here is sure, sure they can. With enough fuck ups and time invested into the process, the question is not if, but how fast, okay? So let's quickly have a quick little reality check here. The question is, do founders want to make the right steps with luck for the next 12 to 24 months or get an exact roadmap from us? That is the question here. So going from six to seven figures or to multiple eight figures a year means moving from a centralized to a decentralized system or model. Okay, the new model for 2023. Now, the new model is categorized by everly disturbing responsibility and power ac across the organizations. Now, the new model is moving towards building valuable systems and processes that work towards organizational success. Let's break the model of some of the brands down and obviously the internet based structures, which we're looking at here down to its first core principles. The number one most important aspect of your business is the business development strategy. Now, understanding your unique growth model should always be the responsibility of the executive floor, meaning you want the founders uh, to have the responsibility to make these foundational decisions. With the overarching business strategy, each department has the responsibility and the deliverables, which look like this. So we have the business development, we have the growth trajectory of the commercial strategy HR, we have the paid acquisition, the media buying, the creative, the retention, the CRM, and the community CSM. We have the product R&D and the sourcing of the development of the logistics, and we have the operations, the finance, the cash flow, the unit economics, and the controlling factors thereof. The business success of the organization is dependent on the contributions of each building block. Now, you, as the founder, have the sole responsibility to create a hyper growth model for your organization and make sure that all of the blocks that are contributing to the achievement of the, the business development roadmap. So you cannot outsource this. You can only find support in a network of other successful founders who have already done it or who has specifically strategic external growth partners who can build out the strategy with you. With every building block, the question is make or buy. It prevails, right? So do I create this playbook myself for maximum success or uh, of the, the building blocks or do I buy and actively external solution, right? The self built systems way is this POV yourself, your brand at six to a seven figure run rate, and you make the smart decision to work with us. So first, with an extremely deep dive into your data, that is what we will do. The due diligence includes hard facts, but also the soft sensations from the brand side to understand the history and the way um, that the business model and the products and the constellations with external players. Our onboarding is so efficient that we are showered with praises from getting clients rolling off of the ground into the action from day one. Speed is key for us. So based on the facts, we build a projected ideal state we want to take the brand too, okay, together. We translate this wireframe of the scaled out business model into individual roadmaps that is then the cornerstone for the future work and includes relevant factors. So we have 
high level data analysis. We have brand product and strategy. We have offer strategy. We have back end protocols. We have CRO protocols, landing pages, retention systems, um, branding and awareness. We have AI architecture and systems design. We have data driven decision making framework and etc. Just to obviously name a fair few of them. Now, what we commonly see is everybody has their own struggles, okay? And it's, it's their own journey, right? It's personal to the founder and to the business owner. So if there is a problem that you are facing right now, there is a solution that we have developed with inside of our network. Here you can see some pictures uh, that was taken recently of one of our um, uh, private events that we were invited to. So, it's why every couple of months we have a high level in person mastermind where we bring together the smartest minds in the service SaaS, the DC space. Uh, it's, it's basically um, a, a pool of experts that know, obviously, exactly dependable on domain specific what you will need in order, obviously, when the, when the problem comes up, right? So you're only invited to these by being our client. So over the past three years, we have established a high level network from service uh, SaaS, DTC brands, agency owner, hedge funds, um, and many more top traders. Um, and you will instantly get access to this whole network. So here is your call to action. As a business owner, I was always looking to cultivate or craft an edge. So we've had our own experiences with agencies, freelancers, and consultants. And in the easiest way of me saying this, that the vast majority of these agencies or consultants or coaching services are absolutely terrible. Now, at the end of the day, it only comes down to two things. Number one, it is making profit. And number two, it is fulfilling on your vision as the business owner. And the self-built systems is built, designed to serve you in helping you reach both of them in the fastest, quickest possible time. Now, to achieve this, we have invested over $150,000 into educating ourselves on the art of direct response, consumer psychology with masterminds, consultations, seminars, and you name it, we have done it as I've mentioned, right? So, and we keep pushing ourselves to be better 1% each and every single day because we are students of the game of business, okay? So every single year we invest an average of $50,000 or more into our own learnings and education. This is our game. So our ultimate goal in mind is to have our business and our culture stand out from the rest. And we want to do the exact same with you. So we want to become the number one strategic growth partner for internet businesses and brands that want to absolutely dominate the universe and make a large impact. So there is a defined fast track to success. And if you want to walk it with us, then you can go ahead, click the link down below and book on a call with me and we will see whether we are a good fit or not. And as I've said this before, we do not work with all companies simply because of our intensive uh, done with you um, and done for you one-on-one -on -one approach. So there are a few components that we look at and a few criteria which we have to check a few tick boxes in order for us to actually step into moving and aligning our goals with the brand's goals. If they align, we will happily move forward and we will work together. So, you can implement this process alone, but you will make X amount of mistakes due to the lack of insights or trying to master the things in the wrong order. But you can do this with a much higher probability of success in, a, in obviously the, in a fraction of time, right? So if you want the fast track, just simply go ahead, book a call with me, um, and we will see and craft that thing and obviously get that specifically done, tailored towards your situation and we will get started immediately. So, and you can simply go ahead and book on a call here. So frequently asked questions, what differentiates you from, uh, from your competitors, right? So most agencies, consultants, or coaching companies out there are isolated. They, stay, they, they give isolated solutions for specific use cases landing pages, A-B testing, CRO audits, and we believe that the time of isolated solutions is over. And that's been proven, okay? So a holistic approach is the future. 
just have a look at AI, okay? So if you give away all of your content for free, what do we get from working with you? Now, we believe in this. We believe in giving away our best stuff and we sell the implementation thereof. We don't want to keep any information secret, okay? But we reveal everything that we do, the knowledge, the documents, the SOPs, and those things can be shared. The direct applications of is, and the competence is only available from us, okay? So beyond that, the knowledge alone does not bring you anything. It is a, about the individual application and the adaptation to the concrete use cases thereof. So if you want the fast lane in the content application, then specifically come to us. Can I talk to someone? Uh, can I talk to some of your customers? So out of respect, as I've stated, number one, we are under NDA with a lot of our customers. So we have developed a process that we are able to most definitely give you obviously the contact information for our respective clients, etc. However, you need, need to first um, obviously tick a few boxes with regards to our interview processing and going through a, few, a fair few things, right? And then we are more than glad to, to share the contact information of our case studies and stuff if that process fulfills out, right? Why do we do this? Simply because I am on calls every single day and I many times if we do not install this process, we get a lot of time uh, wasters, tire kickers and information suckers, okay? Simply because of that reason. So are any of my competitors working with you? And I do not want to disclose insights. As I've mentioned, you do not have to worry, okay? Um, our clients uh, enjoy cross-industry exclusivity. So your competitors cannot work with us during this time. And we agree ex on extreme levels of non-disclosure agreement, which is obviously embedded into our NDA. Do you have a guarantee, which is the last question here, is that you get a guarantee directly, personally from me that if you go into this alone, you will cost yourself years of pain and time, which leads to opportunity cost, than simply going ahead and working with us, right? So if you, found a, if you find another provider that gets the same results as we do, we will happy to be obviously hearing from you, right? So guys, on the last note is that if this is all that you needed to hear, simply go ahead, book in a call and we will have a chat and we will obviously develop uh, the structures and set frameworks and, and get an action plan out for you. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you love the information thereof, if you want me to do more of these videos, please go ahead, leave a like on this video and also leave a comment in the comment section below on what you think about this video. Give me a critique, tell me what I can improve and I will see you guys in the next video.